All right, we are looking at this tool today. It is the eye tester car scope from Ditex or from Auto Ditex. Uh, it's pretty neat. It's got a little SD card slot in the bottom, a couple of BNC connections, and then this two pin connection here. So the uh, the main power is just a power and ground. And this tool will do a relative compression test using just the power and ground off the battery. Uh, or you can use the OBD2 port from the driver's seat. If you disable fuel and crank it, you can get a relative compression test to tell you if you have any dead cylinders if you're dealing with a misfire. Uh, the tool also has a voltmeter uh, that you can, so you can have this hooked up to the battery add your other BNC connection uh, to this uh, IN15 or IN15 right here. And uh, that'll get you a 15 volt voltmeter so you can do some basic testing. It's actually got a nice little needle sweep, which is pretty nice. Uh, and then there's a data logger as well that'll record for quite a long time. So you could set it up with a shunt to do some uh, you know, battery draw testing, or you can just set it up with a with a normal current clamp uh, on the two volt channel to uh, to monitor like a battery draw over time. Uh, there's also an ignition sink, so you can pinpoint which cylinder you're having trouble with, or you can run without the sink, and you can actually add an amp clamp and get a little bit better definition with your uh, relative compression test as well. So this is a pretty nice tool. I just wanted to kind of go over the uh, the layout of it. Uh, it does come with instructions. I highly recommend you read the instructions so you understand how it works and uh, you know there's a few nuances of the tool that I will uh, try my best to go over when we're on a car with it. But I just wanted to kind of go over the basic layout how it works it's really pretty simple to set up and hook up there's a battery inside it doesn't come with the battery you got to put a battery in it uh, that uh, that will help store the date and time so that way you can save these reports and then pop the sd card out and transfer them if you want uh, or you can just save them right on the tool as well but uh, the tool also does a uh, fuel rail pressure sensor test which is really awesome uh, i've got a couple of videos out there about that but i'm going to do an in-depth one so keep your eye out for that where i'll break down the exact setup and how to do it and how to set it up and how to figure out uh, what range you're dealing with and what kind of sensor you're dealing with uh, but this is the basic layout of the tool and how it works uh, really simple really straightforward uh, this is something you can give an apprentice you, or uh, a helping hand send, send them out if you know you have a misfire diag to do in the afternoon you could send them out there to do a quick relative compression test kind of get you ahead of the game or if you just you know you're buttoned up you got 20 minutes before lunch you don't have enough time to do anything critical you could go out into the parking lot and just knock out a couple of quick easy tests or say you have a diesel no start you can do a relative compression test and a fuel rail pressure test without having to hook up a scan tool or you know get it into the bay you can do this really quick really simply and uh, i'll demonstrate that in a later video but this is the basic layout you know power ground a single lead all these grounds are bussed together so you don't need to worry about more grounds you just have it hooked up to the battery and then this is your positive lead or your high reference for the uh, IN15 uh, BNC port. So that's the basic layout. The, like I said, the instructions are really important because there's a few little nuances of the tools that are definitely worth uh, taking a few minutes and learning how the tool works. But uh, otherwise, it's a pretty nice little time-saving tool. So anyway, this is uh, the kind of breakdown of what it all is. And now we're going to go do some on-car stuff. All right, so now we have this plugged into the OBD2 port down there under the dash. And this might be a little hard to see. We're going to go under the compression test. And the option is for voltage here. 
Then we're going to go over to unsynced. We're going to pick six cylinders. Then we're going to go over to start. And before we hit start, I'm going to get in there uh, so I can hold this in clear flood mode and crank it. So go ahead and hop in. We're going to hit start. It's going to go ahead and run the analysis. And you can see it gives us nice six even bar graphs. This is a six cylinder truck. And then we have an option to save that to a file too. So we can save it as a text file, a bitmap, or a native file structure inside the tool. Uh, and we're not going to save that one, so we can go ahead and back out. And I'll do a few more demonstrations on a few other cars doing that, but then we have the option for the rail pressure test, the data logger, and the voltmeter. And there's the voltmeter, and you can switch between battery voltage or what your input 15 voltage reads. So that's a pretty neat little tool, good time saver. Uh, the compression test is super handy, even without a sink, just so you can get an idea of the uh, condition of the engine. But we're gonna, now we're gonna move on to some different tests. All right, we are using the Ditex eye tester car scope. And uh, I just wanna show you guys the voltmeter first. And you can see this is our battery voltage. And if we go over to inputs, this is our input, uh, our 15 volt input. So if you look at the end here, this is our BNC connector. This is our input 15. That's our input two volts. Uh, we're not gonna worry about that. that we're gonna use this for an amp clamp, but we're not gonna use that today. We're just looking at the voltmeter. So this is a single lead. The ground or your low reference is right here at the battery. And then this is your battery feed to turn the tool on. And you can see we get battery voltage. And we have input voltage here. Right now it's zero. We're back probed up here into the fuel rail pressure sensor. Uh, and the key's off, so we're reading near zero volts there. I'm going to go ahead and cycle the key on so you can see what some voltage looks like. And here you can see we are, let's see if I can get, make sure there's no glare on that. We have battery voltage, and then we have 0.55 or 550 millivolts on the input channel. That's key on engine off on that fuel rail pressure sensor signal. So now we're gonna go ahead and go back. We're gonna go to the data logger so I can show you that. We're gonna go to the logger settings and we're gonna make sure that is off. That is off. And we can turn on the 15 volt channel and our battery voltage. And we're, we're gonna go to the data logger and you can see we have just those two on and the data logger is gonna track it over a minute or we can hit the up button and go up to 600 minutes on the screen uh, but it'll record much longer than that basically as long as you have this tool powered on it's going to record that but there's a minute of time so i'm going to go ahead and shut the key off and we're going to watch that voltage go away on our input channel And here you can see we still have about 500 millivolts on our input channel, which is green. And then as everything powers down, you can see 
it went down to uh, about 30 millivolts or 0 0.03 volts. And that looks like it takes a sample about every second. So it's not super, super fast, but it's a great long-term data logger. And that's what that looks like there. So we're gonna go ahead and back out. Then we're gonna go to our rail pressure sensor. This is a Bosch system, 150 megapascals. And now it's gonna ask us to turn the key on. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. See if I can set that up there so maybe you can watch that. So once we turn the key on, it's going to look for the normal key on engine off or zero pressure voltage for this sensor. And it found it, it says OK. So it thinks that that's normal. So now we can go ahead and hit OK. That's going to give us this. And then I'm going to crank it and start it. And it's going to show us what our pressure is approximately at the fuel rail pressure. Uh, and if you set your settings right, it's, this is actually really accurate. So I'm going to go ahead and start the vehicle. Get this light off of here. see with it running we have 40 megapascals our sensor voltage and our battery voltage on here and it even tells us whether that's normal or not and uh, if we're just cranking this say the engine doesn't start it'll show us what our pressure is just cranking if we need it to so I'm gonna go ahead and shut all this down and then we're gonna do a relative compression test on this truck since we have everything hooked up anyway so we're just gonna go back to this screen. I'm gonna go shut the truck off. Okay, so now I've got the uh, fuel injection fuse pulled so this vehicle won't start. We're gonna go to our relative compression test. We're just doing voltage unsynced. And this isn't six, this is eight cylinders. Then we're gonna go over here to the start button, hit okay. It's gonna tell us to go ahead and crank. So we're gonna crank it, and it seems like it's about 10 seconds. And once it collects enough data, it's gonna go ahead and analyze it. And you can see here, that we have nice even compression across all eight cylinders. So if this vehicle is brought in as a no start, I wouldn't be concerned with a mechanical issue judging on how it cranks and what we have here. So we're not looking for a mechanical issue if this vehicle doesn't start. I expect it would start. It makes enough compression and the compression's even across all eight cylinders. Uh, and we're gonna go ahead and save that. We're gonna save it as a bitmap so we have a nice picture of it. And it does take a few seconds to, to create a bitmap file. But then we'll be able to take the SD card out of here, put it into our computer, and then transfer that file over for a customer report to attach to an RO or a customer file. And if we want to just save it on the tool, this IRC file will quickly save it right to the tool and then if we want to go back and review these, right below the start button is the IRC. And we can take a look. This is what we just looked at. And if we want to go look at something else, here's another V8 we did. Yeah, here's a six cylinder. I didn't do any four cylinders yet. Here's a six cylinder that we did with a spark plug removed. So you can see it really picks up that bad cylinder. And sometimes, so this was battery voltage and then this was the same, yeah, these two were the same vehicle. 
Uh, this was battery voltage, and I believe this was with an amp clamp. Uh, yeah, so that says voltage here and current there. So you can see that your current is going to be more accurate. So if you have a discrepancy measuring just voltage, sometimes you're, you uh, will get a little bit more definition and better clarity if you use a current clamp here and then set it up on this IN2 channel to do the same test just using a current clamp instead of the battery voltage. Uh, but otherwise, pretty cool handy tool. It's way faster and easier than setting up an oscilloscope. And if you're just running out to a parking lot or just doing some quick basic tests or you have a helper or an apprentice that's gonna do this for you, you can send them out with this tool to collect a lot of data and save you some time when you get that vehicle into the bay. Uh, so I think it's a pretty neat tool. Uh, I'm going to pr probably use it quite a bit, uh, especially like in the winter time. If I don't want to pull in a cold vehicle and I know I have a dead miss, I might go out with this, plug it into the OBD2 port, get a nice, uh, uh, you know, a nice readout. And that way, if I have a mechanical condition, I can just be done and I don't have to bring that vehicle in, do a bunch of messing around, or we can sell more time to go in the cylinder and decide what we're going after. But, uh, but anyway, pretty awesome tool going to use the heck out of it. I like the rail pressure test. It's quite a bit faster than hooking up a scan tool and messing around. Uh, so and the data logger, uh, you can set that up with an amp clamp to do some extended battery draw testing. Or uh, if you want to set it up on the ground side of a battery with a current shunt, you can basically run this uh, until the battery goes dead in order to monitor everything. So pretty neat tool. Uh, I'm definitely going to use the heck out of it. I really like the uh, the shared ground feature and the single back probe. Uh, I'll probably get a longer lead so I can sit in the driver's seat and do this and just run this lead all the way out to the rail pressure sensor. But otherwise, uh, I'm pretty impressed with this tool. It's pretty nice. So that's uh, that's all I got for you today. Thanks for watching.